So when you first boot up Resolve, you're going to see the project manager. This is where you can select from old projects and you can also create a new project. So if you want to create a new project, you can click down here below or there will be a option here for untitled project, which basically means starting a new one. So I'm going to double click on untitled project and then it may take a second, but you'll be loaded into the main Resolve interface. So right now at the bottom, we're on the media page. Next to that is cut, edit, fusion, color, fairlight, and deliver. So let's quickly go through those. So on the media page, you have the media storage here, which is where on the left, you can right click and add locations of different places on your computer where you're storing video assets. So for instance, if I have a stock clips folder, I can click on here, see some video assets on my computer, and then I can bring this into the media pool down below. So in a nutshell, if it's in the media pool, then it is referenced inside of your project, but the media storage is just assets that are on your computer. You could also use a file explorer to bring in MP4 video files and the like, just dragging them into the media pool on any tab you want to use them as another way to get assets in your project. So let's go over to the cut page really quick. This is one of the editing workflows. I'm going to take this video clip from the media pool and I'm going to drag it onto one of the timelines. So one of the main differences in the cut page is that you're going to have multiple timelines at once. So at the bottom, you have your zoomed in timeline. This cursor right here is going to constantly be in the middle. So if I hit play, space on the keyboard or play over here, you can see how this timeline is going to keep moving along. And then it's going to stay zoomed in. So you're only looking at part of your video at once. Whereas the second timeline that sits above is going to be showing the entirety of your timeline all at once, including all of the video clips, which makes it handy for clicking around and going between different sections on your timeline, especially if you have a long project. So then in the top right, you have the inspector. So when there's a property you want to edit about your video clip, you can set custom values here. And you can also animate values in Resolve. Whenever you see these little gray diamonds, you can check that to set a keyframe. And then you just need two keyframe points with different values to animate between those properties. Okay, so let's go over to the edit page, which is a slightly different editing workflow, but it more or less has the same stuff on it. And lastly for right now, if you wanna add transitions, titles, or effects, on the cut page, you can find those respectively up here at the top left transitions, which is where one clip fades into another clip titles when you want to add text to your video, such as a intro title, and then effects when you want to change the look of a video clip, but not necessarily when it's transitioning, but maybe the entirety of that clip, you could inverse the colors, for instance, or add light effects, stuff like that. So let's go now to the edit page and you'll see that this is very similar. You have one timeline down here in the bottom. The edit page only has one. The effects, transitions and titles are all stacked together in the effects library in the top left. So you can see all of these going through the different categories over here. The media pool still up there. And uh, whenever you don't see something, if the color of the selected window is white, it should be showing on the screen somewhere. And then of course, in the top right, we have the inspector. So next is the fusion page. This is where you can add complicated effects setups to your video clips. So the basic idea is you start with the media in and you're going to end up with the media out and everything between that is a node that can affect your video. So for instance, I can add a brightness contrast node if I want to modify this a little bit. So this brightness contrast node is going to take the input and it's going to change it before we send it to the output. So Let's just uh, maybe increase the saturation a little bit. And now you can see how this video is now a lot more saturated. The advantage of the Fusion page is that you can add many different nodes here rather than just a single effect. You can combine them in many different ways. And if you right click in the nodes window, go to add tool, you can see that you have a lot of options here to work with. So on the color page, you're working with tools such as color wheels over here to adjust the look of your clip. You also have uh, power windows, which can mask out your video. Clips. So if you want a change to only show up in part of your video, let's just take this way over to the left and you can see everything is a lot more red. But if we add a power window here, it's going to serve as a mask. So now the color page changes are only going to show wherever this uh, color wheel is showing at any given time. You can also use the qualifier tool as another way to select mask out certain colors. And, and when you have that color selected, then the changes you make in the color page will once again 
only apply to the qualified colors. So next up is the Fairlight page. This is specifically for audio editing. So it gives you a better look at the different audio channels and uh, the volume levels. You still have an effects library, but everything inside of here is specific to audio. And you can see that the only tracks that show on the timeline are the audio tracks as well. So it's possible to record voiceovers in the Fairlight page by going over to the mixer over here, selecting a input device. So for instance, that could be this microphone right here, and then patch it to the audio channels you want to record to. Then you have the option to arm a track for recording. And when you hit record, it's going to start uh, recording audio over that track. So there you can see I basically just recorded audio straight onto that audio track. So in a nutshell, whenever you need to do anything audio related, that is what the Fairlight page is about. And then finally, we have the Deliver tab, which is where you can export your timelines to videos. So the easiest way to do it would just be to come up here to the render settings. So YouTube, we could just select from this drop down the resolution we want for our video. The frame rate by default will just go ahead and match your project settings and then format QuickTime or .mp4 will work just fine for most purposes. QuickTime is a uh, .move format, by the way. And uh, if you want to know what your project settings are, just go up to File, Project Settings, and you can see for your project what kind of resolution you have, your frame rate. And in Presets, you can save this as a preset. So if we go in here and I say Tutorial Preset, then that's going to take all these settings in here and make it something that you can reuse across your project. So I can right click here and do save as user default config. And then that would mean that those same settings are going to load with all of your future projects. Anyway, when you want to export your file, you just need to give it a file name over here, give it a location on your computer, you can do that by hitting browse. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that to the desktop, add it to render queue. And then on the right, we can select our job that we want to render hit render all. And then that would be the simple explanation for how you export your video. So hopefully in this video, I've been able to give you guys a quick rundown of Resolve, explaining where to find the most important features in a timely manner. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in my future video content.